Marvin Neil Simon is an American playwright, screenwriter and author. He has written in more than 30 plays and nearly the same number of movie screenplays, mostly adaptations of his plays. He has received more combined Oscar and Tony nominations than any other writer. Simon grew up in New York during the Great Depression, with his parents' financial hardships affecting their marriage, and giving him a mostly unhappy and unstable childhood. He often took refuge in movie theaters where he enjoyed watching the early comedians like Charlie Chaplin. After a few years in the Army Air Force Reserve after graduating from high school, he began writing comedy scripts for radio and some popular early television shows. Among them were The Phil Silvers Show and Sid Caesar's Your Show of Shows in 1950, where he worked alongside other young writers including Carl Reiner, Mel Brooks and Selma Diamond. He began writing his own plays beginning with Come Blow Your Horn, which took him three years to complete and ran for 678 performances on Broadway. It was followed by two more successful plays, Burfoot in the Park and The Odd Couple, for which he won a Tony Award. It made him a national celebrity and the hottest new playwright on Broadway during the 1960s to 1980s. He wrote both original screenplays and stage plays, with some films actually based on his plays. His style ranged from romantic comedy to fast and more serious dramatic comedy. Overall, he has garnered 17 Tony nominations and won three. During one season, he had four successful plays showing on Broadway at the same time, and in 1983 became the only living playwright to have a New York theater, the Neil Simon Theater, named in his honor. After Simon won the Pulitzer Prize for Drama in 1991 for he Lost in Yonkers, critics began to take notice of the depths complexity and issues of universal interest in his stories, which expressed serious concerns of most average people. His comedies were based around subjects such as marital conflict, infidelity, sibling rivalry, adolescence, and fear of aging. Most of his plays were also partly autobiographical, portraying his troubled childhood and different stages of his life and he created characters who were typically New Yorkers and often Jewish, like himself. Simon's facility with dialogue gives his stories a rare blend of realism, humor and seriousness which audiences find easy to identify with. Early Years Neil Simon was born on July 4, 1927, in the Bronx, New York, to Jewish parents. His father, Irving Simon, was a garment salesman, and his mother, Mamie Simon, was mostly a homemaker. Simon had one older brother by eight years, Danny Simon. He grew up in Washington Heights, Manhattan during the period of the Great Depression, graduating from DeWitt Clinton High School when he was 16, where he was nicknamed Doc and described as extremely shy in the school yearbook. Simon's childhood was difficult and mostly unhappy due to his parents' tempestuous marriage and financial hardship caused by the Depression. He would sometimes block out their arguments by putting a pillow over his ears at night. His father often abandoned the family for months at a time, causing them further financial and emotional hardship. As a result, Simon and his brother Danny were sometimes forced to live with different relatives or else their parents took in borders for some income. During an interview with writer Lawrence Grobel, Simon stated, To this day I never really knew what the reason for all the fights and battles were about between the two of them. She'd hate him and be very angry, but he would come back and she would take him back. She really loved him. Simon states that among the reasons he became a writer was to fulfill his need to be independent of such emotional family. Issues, a need he recognized when he was seven or eight. I'd better start taking care of myself somehow. It made me strong as an independent person. To escape difficulties at home he often took refuge in movie theaters, where he especially enjoyed comedies with silent stars like Charlie Chaplin, Buster Keaton, and Laurel and Hardy. Simon recalls, I was constantly being dragged out of movies for laughing too loud. I think part of what made me a comedy writer is the blocking out of some of the really ugly.
painful things in my childhood and covering it up with a humorous attitude, do something to laugh until I was able to forget what was hurting. Simon attributes these childhood movies for inspiring him to someday write comedy. I wanted to make a whole audience fall onto the floor, writhing and laughing so hard that some of them pass out. He appreciated Chaplin's ability to make people laugh and made writing comedy his long-term goal, and also saw it as a way to connect with people. I was never going to be an athlete or a doctor. He began creating comedy for which he got paid while still in high school, when at the age of 15, Simon and his brother created a series of comedy sketches for employees at an annual department store event and to help develop his writing skill. He often spent three days a week at the library reading books by famous humorists such as Mark Twain, Robert Benchley, George S. Kaufman and S. J. Perelman. Soon after graduating high school he signed up with the Army Air Force Reserve at New York University. Eventually being sent to Colorado as a corporal, it was during those years in the reserve that Simon began writing, starting as a sports editor. He was assigned to Lowry Air Force Base during 1945 and attended the University of Denver from 1945 to 1946 writing career, television comedy two years later. He quit his job as a mailroom clerk in the Warner Brothers offices in Manhattan to write radio and television scripts with his brother Danny Simon, including tutelage by radio, humorous Goodman Ace when Ace ran a short-lived writing workshop for CBS. They wrote for the radio series The Robert Q. Lewis Show, which led to other writing jobs, including The Phil Silvers Show. Sid Caesar hired the duo for his popular television comedy series Your Show of Shows, for which he earned two Emmy Award nominations. Simon credits these two latter writing jobs for their importance to his career, stating that between the two of them, I spent five years and learned more about what I was eventually going to do than in any other previous experience, he adds. I knew when I walked into your show of shows that this was the most talented group of writers that up until that time had ever been assembled together. Simon describes a typical writing session with the show. There were about seven writers, plus Sid, Carl Reiner, and Howie Morris. Mel Brooks and maybe Woody Allen would write one of the other sketches. Everyone would pitch in and rewrite, so we all had a part of it. It was probably the most enjoyable time I ever had in writing with other people. Simon incorporated some of their experiences into his play Laughter on the 23rd Floor. The play won him two Emmy Award nominations. The first Broadway show Simon wrote was Catch a Star, collaborating on sketches with his brother, Danny. Playwright during 1961, Simon's first Broadway play, Come Blow Your Horn, ran for 678 performances at the Brooks Atkinson Theatre. Simon took three years to write that first play, partly because he was also working on writing television scripts at the same time. He rewrote the play at least 20 times from beginning to end. It was the lack of belief in myself. I said, this isn't good enough. It's not right. It was the equivalent to three years of college. That play, besides being a monumental effort for Simon, was a turning point in his career. The theatre and I discovered each other after Barefoot in the Park and the Odd Couple, for which he won a Tony Award. He became a national celebrity and was considered the hottest new playwright on Broadway, writes Susan Coprince in her book on Simon. Those successful productions were followed by others, including The Good Doctor, God's Favorite, Chapter 2, The Playing Our Song, I Ought to Be in Pictures, Brighton Beach Memoirs, Biloxi Blues, Broadway Bound, Jake's Women, The Goodbye Girl, and Laughter on the 23rd Floor. His subjects range from serious to romantic comedy to more serious drama and less humor. Overall, he has garnered 17 Tony nominations and won three. During 1966 Simon had four shows playing at Broadway theaters at the same time. Sweet Charity, The Star-Spangled Girl, The Odd Couple, and Barefoot in the Park. 
His professional association with producer Emanuel Asenberg began with the Sunshine Boys during 1972 and continued with The Good Doctor, God's Favorite, Chapter 2, The Playing Our Song, I Ought to Be in Pictures, Brighton Beach Memoirs, Biloxi Blues, Broadway Bound, Jake's Women, The Goodbye Girl, and Laughter on the 23rd Floor, among others. Simon also adapted material written by others for his plays, such as the musical Little Me from the novel by Patrick Dennis, Sweet Charity from a screenplay by Federico Fellini, and Promises, Promises from a film by Billy Wilder, The Apartment. Simon has occasionally been brought in as an uncredited script doctor to help hone the book for Broadway-bound plays or musicals under development, such as a chorus line. During the 1970s he wrote a string of successful plays, sometimes having more than one playing at the same time to standing room only audiences. And while he was by then recognized as one of the country's leading playwrights, his inner drive kept him writing. Did I relax and watch my boyhood ambitions being fulfilled before my eyes? Not if you were born in the Bronx, in the Depression and Jewish, you don't. Simon has also drawn extensively on his own life and experience for his stories, with settings typically in working-class New York neighborhoods, similar to ones he grew up in. In 1983 he began writing the first of three autobiographical plays, Brighton Beach Memoirs, Biloxi Blues, and Broadway Bound. With them, he received his greatest critical acclaim. After his follow-up play, Lost in Yonkers, Simon was awarded a Pulitzer Prize. Screenwriter Simon has also written screenplays for more than 20 films, and he has received four Academy Award nominations for his screenplays. Some of his screenplays are adaptations of his own plays, along with some original work, including The Out of Towners. Murder by Death and the Goodbye Girl. But although most of his films have been successful, movies were always secondary in importance to his plays. I always feel more like a writer when I'm writing a play because of the tradition of the theatre. There is no tradition of the screenwriter, unless he is also the director, which makes him an auteur. So I really feel that I'm writing for posterity with plays, which have been around since the Greek times. Simon chose not to write the screenplay for his first film adaptation, Come Blow Your Horn, preferring to focus on his playwriting. However, he was disappointed with the film, and tried to control his film screenplays thereafter. Many of his earlier screenplays were similar to the play, a characteristic Simon observed in hindsight. I really didn't have an interest in films then, he explains. I was mainly interested in continuing writing for the theater. The plays never became cinematic. The Odd Couple, however, was a highly successful early adaptation. Both faithful to the stage play but also more like a traditional film, having more scenic variety, themes and genres. Theater critic John La describes Simon's primary theme as being about the silent majority, many of whom are frustrated, edgy, and insecure. Simon's characters are also portrayed as likable and easy for audiences to identify with, often having difficult relationships in marriage, friendship, or business, as they struggle to find a sense of belonging. There is always an implied seeking for solutions to human problems through relationships with other people, and Simon is able to deal with serious topics of universal and enduring concern, writes biographer Aditha McGovern, while still making people laugh. She adds that one of Simon's hallmarks is his great compassion for his fellow human beings, an opinion similar to that of author Alan Cooper, who states that Simon's plays are essentially about friendships, even when they're about marriage or siblings or crazy aunts. With regard to places, all of Simon's plays except for two are set in New York which gives them an urban flavor. Within that setting, Simon's themes, besides marital conflict, sometimes include infidelity, sibling rivalry, adolescences, bereavement, and fear of aging. 
and despite the serious nature of the themes, Simon has continually managed to tell the stories with humor, developing the theme to include both realism and comedy. Simon said he would tell aspiring comedy playwrights not to try to make it funny. Try and make it real and then the comedy will come. When I was writing plays, he says, I was almost always writing a drama that was funny. I wanted to tell her story about real people. Simon explains how he manages this combination. My view is, how sad and funny life is. I can't think of a humorous situation that does not involve some pain. I used to ask, what is a funny situation? Now I ask, what is a sad situation and how can I tell it humorously? In marriage relationships, his comedies often portray these struggles with plots of marital difficulties or fading love, sometimes leading to separation, divorce and child custody battles. Their endings would typically conclude, after many twists in the plot, to renewal of the relationships. Politics seldom have any overt role in Simon's stories, and his characters avoid confronting society despite their personal problems. Simon is simply interested in showing human beings as they are, with their foibles, eccentricities, and absurdities. Drama critic Richard Eden notes that Simon's popularity relies on his ability to portray a painful comedy, where characters say, in do funny things in extreme contrast to the unhappiness they are feeling. Simon's plays are generally semi-autobiographical, often portraying aspects of his troubled childhood and first marriages. According to Coprince, Simon's plays also invariably depict the plight of white middle-class Americans, most of whom are New Yorkers and many of whom are Jewish, like himself, he states. I suppose you could practically trace my life through my plays, in plays such as Lost in Yonkers. Simon suggests the necessity of a loving marriage, opposite to that of his parents, and when children are deprived of it in their home, they end up emotionally damaged and lost. One of the key influences on Simon is his Jewish heritage, says Co-Prince, although he is unaware of it when writing. For example, in the Brighton Beach trilogy, she explains, the lead character is a master of self-deprecating humor, cleverly poking fun at himself and at his Jewish culture as a whole. Simon himself has said that his characters are people who, often, self-deprecating and who, usually see life from the grimmest point of view, explaining, I see humor in even the grimmest of situations. And I think it's possible to write a play so moving it can tear you apart and still have humor in it. This theme in writing, notes Co-Prince, belongs to a tradition of Jewish humor, a tradition which values laughter as a defense mechanism and which sees humor as a healing, life-giving force. Characters Simon's characters are typically portrayed as imperfect, unheroic figures who are at heart decent human beings, according to Co-Prince. And she traces Simon's style of comedy to that of Menanda, a playwright of ancient Greece. Menanda, like Simon, also used average people in domestic life settings, the stories also blending humor and tragedy into his themes. Many of Simon's most memorable plays are built around two character scenes, as in segments of California Suite and Plaza Suite. Before writing, Simon tries to create an image of his characters. He says that the play, Star Spangled Girl which was a box office failure, was the only play I ever wrote where I did not have a clear visual image of the characters in my mind as I sat down at the typewriter. Simon considers character building as an obligation, stating that the trick is to do it skillfully. While other writers have created vivid characters, they have not created nearly as many as Simon. Simon has no peers among contemporary comedy playwrights, states biographer Robert Johnson. Simon's characters often amuse the audience with sparkling. Zing is believable due to Simon's skill with writing dialogue. He reproduces speech so adroitly that to his characters are usually plausible and easy for audiences to identify with and laugh at. His characters may also express serious and continuing concerns of mankind.
rather than purely topical material. McGovern notes that to his characters are always impatient, with phoniness, with shallowness, with amorality, adding that they sometimes express implicit and explicit criticism of modern urban life with its stress, its vacuity, and its materialism. However, Simon's characters will never be seen thumbing his or her nose at society, style and subject matter. The key aspect most consistent in Simon's writing style is comedy, situational and verbal, and presents serious subjects in a way that makes audiences laugh to avoid weeping. He achieves this with rapid-fire jokes and wisecracks, in a wide variety of urban settings and stories. This creates a sophisticated urban humor, says editor Kimball King, and results in plays that represent middle America. Simon creates every day apparently simple conflicts with his stories, which become comical premises for problems which need be solved. Another feature of his writing is his adherence to traditional values regarding marriage and family. McGovern states that this thread of the monogamous family runs though most of Simon's work, and is one he feels is necessary to give stability to society. Some critics have therefore described his stories as somewhat old-fashioned, although Johnson points out that most members of his audiences are delighted to find Simon upholding their own beliefs, and where infidelity is the theme in a Simon play, rarely, if ever, do those characters gain happiness. In Simon's eyes, adds Johnson, divorce is never a victory. Another aspect of Simon's style is his ability to combine both comedy and drama. Barefoot in the Park, for example, was a light romantic comedy, while portions of Plaza Suite were written as farce, and portions of California Suite of high comedy. Simon was willing to experiment and take risks, often moving his plays in new and unexpected directions. In The Gingerbread Lady, he combines comedy with tragedy, rumors was a full-length farce. In Jake's Women and Brighton Beach memoirs, he uses dramatic narration. In The Good Doctor, he created a pastiche of sketches around various stories by Chekhov and Fools was written as a fairy tale romance similar to stories by Sholem Aleichem.